Hello and welcome back. This is Foodborne Parasitology. I am Tommy and I'm going to explain to you today the meat associated parasites. Let's go. So we are going to start with the cestodes. Do you remember the belt shape like worms? Flat. So here we have tinea. Tinea solium, tinea saginata and tinea asiatica. You know tinea for sure, it's very popular, this parasite. So tinea solium is 5 meters long. They have a scolex with 4 suction cups and a rostellum arm with hooks. They have immature, mature and pregnant rings because they are cestos, remember? And pregnant with less than 12 uterus ramifications. In the case of Tania saginata, they are bigger, they are 10 meters long. They have 2,000 rings and only a scolex with 4 suction cups. They don't have the rostellum up with hooks. And Tania asiatica is the same as Tania solium. Then the Tania saginata, the, the same thing here, but with more uterus ramifications. The cycle in that is this one. Eggs or gravid proglottids in feces and passed into environment. In this case, pigs become infected by ingesting vegetation contaminated by eggs or gravid proglottids. Then, uncle spheres hatch, penetrate intestinal wall and circulate to musculature. Ongospheres develop into cystic circuit in muscle and then humans infected by ingesting raw or uncooked infected meat. As you can see here, this is the collect of the Tinea saginata and Tinea solium. And then, uh, of course, they are going to attach with that collect into the intestine and uh, adults will start to grow in the small intestine. And the cycle repeats, of course. So, eggs eaten by pig, they go to the musculature, they develop the cystic circuit in the muscle, and then we eat the infected meat. Here is the same thing, but in this case, because it is Tania saginata, we don't have the pig, we have the cow. In this case, it's the cow, and that's why it's bigger as well. So remember, if it's bigger, it's because of the cow. And Tania asiatica is the pig as well. Indeed, Tania solium and asiatica are the same. They only differ in uh, one thing, which we're going to see next. Okay, epidemiology. Well, everywhere. Transmission by eating infected pork, uncooked, and here everywhere transmission by eating infected beef uncooked asymptomatic for most cases yeah but it can cause gas diarrhea and uh, mobility obstruction and perforation Basic basically the mobility of the parasite inside the intestine can uh, of course obstruct the flow of nutrients and food so we will get a malabsorption and they can lead to perforation of the intestine because of the scolex and the uh, intania saginata is the same but here it differs in tenia asiatica the majority of cases are not asymptomatic in fact the 78% per of people infected with Tania asiatica, they develop pain, anal itching, diarrhea, nausea and hunger. Because remember, they don't have digestive tract, they will going to compete with us for food and nutrients. The diagnosis here is coprology, serology, ELISA and um, molecular PCR, the same in all of them. And the 
The treatment is the same in uh, all three of them, and it is pressed in Quantel and Niclosamate to kill the parasites. Prophylaxis, well, cooking, freezing, hygiene, inspection and control when producing meat from these animals. And then we have cysticercosis. Okay, so you remember this life cycle here, the cysticerci in the muscle from the tinea. Okay, cysticercus is the infectious larva. Okay, we already know that. Cysticercus cellulose is the cysticercus from the tinea solium of the pork. And cysticercus bovis is the, the one from the saginata of the beef. The, the one from the pork can live from 3 to 6 years and to kill them we need to freeze them to minus 24 degrees for at least 24 hours. In the beef, the cystic circus uh, can live one year and uh, to kill it we need to freeze it to minus 24 degrees celsius for 3 days. The life cycle here is this, is this one. This is the tenure life cycle. But here it says or humans. Or humans. Or humans. Why? Because if we ingest directly the embryonated eggs, we are going to develop the cysticercosis. Cysticercosis may develop in any organ, being more common in subcutaneous tissues as well as in the brain and eyes. So basically it will do the same thing it does to the pigs and to the cows. It will migrate to other parts of the body and it will cause severe problems. Indeed, cysticercosis is even worse than having tinea. The epidemiology is by ingestion of the eggs or proglotids. The pathogenesis, well, you get a neurocysticercosis. What is that? Neuro central nervous system. Basically, it will attack the central nervous system and it will cause an epilepsy. It will cause epilepsy. The diagnosis is the same as tinea, which is coprology, serology, ELISA, and the molecular PCR. And the treatment is albendazole and uh, corticosteroids for the inflammation they will going, they're going to create. Albendazole to try to kill them. And even surgery. The prophylaxis is, uh, well, cooking the meat, freezing it, and uh, feces control and hygiene. This is very important. Moving on to the next one, we have nematodes, trichinella SPP. Trichinella. Females, um, of course, they are bigger than males, as in most cases, they are 2.2 millimeters, while males are only 1.2. And the larvae are 100 micrometers, so they are very, very small. The male has an extension to attach to the female for the reproduction. And the cycle is autotheroxenous in some animals. So let's have a look at the life cycle. In humans, it starts with the ingestion of uncooked pork meat and then uh, the larvae in the intestine are going to grow to adults and then the adults are going to create larva and then those larvae are going to go through the circulation to the straightened muscle and they're going to insist there. In the case of pigs and rodents, uh, we have this, the following. They uh, ingest meat scraps or animals with the encyst lava in straightened muscle. And then the same thing will happen to them, but this in uh, rodents is autotherxenous because it's the transmission is through carnivorism. They will uh, eat each other and the cycle will repeat 
without too much trouble. The epidemiology is everywhere in the world. The pathogenesis in the state of invasion, they create a gastrointestinal problem and when, they, when we ingest the, the larvae. Then when we have the adults and they create all the larvae, we will have problems in the muscles and uh, myocarditis. We can have myocarditis. And then when the, we have the encystation of those larvae in uh, our stated muscle, we have muscle calcification and that's a very big problem. We will have pain and we will not able to contract the muscle properly. The diagnosis is eosinophilia, uh, biopsy and ELISA. This is a serology test for antibodies, uh, biopsy is a biopsy. And eosinophilia is the um, elevation of eosinophil in the bloodstream, so another serology there. The treatment is corticosteroids for uh, lowering the inflammation and mebendazole to try to, to kill the parasites inside the, our intestine. Prophylaxis, cooking and freezing and uh, pigs hygiene and control. This is very important to prevent the transmission to continue. And then we have the protozoa related to meat. We have the sarcocystis and the toxoplasma gondii. Sarcocystis are intracellular obligated and definitive hosts or intermediate depending on the species. And they are similar to toxoplasma indeed. The cycle is the following. So here we have sparsists, oocysts and cysts, three stages of the protozoa. So sparsists and oocysts in feces. Sparsists ingested by cows and pigs. Sparsists ruptus releasing sporozoids that enter endothelial cells of blood vessels and undergo schizogony. Schizons rupture releasing Merozoids. Merozoids penetrate muscle cells and develop into cysts with brandizoids. Cysts with brandizoids ingested in undercooked meat. And uh, here, the brandizoids released from ruptured cysts enter intestinal cells and then they go through fertilization, they create immature oocysts and then they exit the host to repeat the cycle. The epidemiology, well, they are everywhere in infected meat of every kind. Uh, there is a high variety and uh, it can go from the normal beef to the pork to the poultry and to even wild animals. The pathogenesis is mainly asymptomatic, but it can also get diarrhea, pain and nausea. We will have muscle joints, pain and fever if we are immunosuppressed. Diagnosis through eosinophilia, coprology, biopsy. So eosinophilia is a serology test, a coprology species analysis and a biopsy. There is no treatment, but cortimoxazole can help and the corticosteroids will lower the inflammation. And the prophylaxis is well cooking and freezing, feces control and uh, to give pills for the animals. Because if the animals don't have the cysts, they don't develop the cysts, the cycle cannot close and we are not going to get infected. And then we have Toxoplasma gondii. This is a very important parasite and uh, it's part of the water-related parasites as well, which is uh, we're going to discuss in the next video. 
and uh, it is an intracellular obligated parasite and it has both sexual and asexual phases and they have the oocysts and the cysts the oocysts contain trophozoites and the cysts contain the bradyzoites as in here that's why they are similar and they have also the trophozoites as a form there so three forms the cycle is this one the oocysts the same thing for as in the, the previous indeed the tissue cysts and then the the cat is going to reinfect itself but if the those oocysts are ingested by animals and we eat those animals then we are infected as well and uh, the oocysts can also infect the water and uh, with the water the fruit and veggies can uh, get infected too and if we ingest them we are um, indeed catching those cysts and uh, we will develop the the symptoms so that's why this parasite is the parasite of the parasites because the transmission is so it has so much variety indeed even if with a transfusion you can get infected and even a vertical is very important this uh, parasite for pregnant women because it can affect the fetus the epidemiology is oral through contaminated water vertical as i said and transfusional uh, but also for eating raw or uncooked meat from pigs mainly okay so the pathogenesis we will get uh, normally fever and uh, if we're pregnant we're going to maybe be in uh, risk of abortion then it can also affect uh, our eyes and uh, it can create epilepsy in uh, immunosuppressed people the is the worst case scenario because they are going to create cysts in the eyes and in the brain the diagnosis is visualization serology and pcr there is no specific treatment to this, unfortunately, so the recommendations, the prophylaxis are to use gloves, hygiene and uh, be careful of raw meat and milk and uh, the cat litter boxes because they come from the feces of cats and uh, if we have a cat and we don't have good hygiene with the litter well, uh, we will have a chance of getting Toxoplasma gondii. And in the pregnant women, they recommend to them to not eat raw meat or milk because they are more at risk than other people, especially if they haven't had the Toxoplasma before in their lives and they catch it for the first time during pregnancy. Okay, so this was the video about maize related parasite. I hope you liked the video. I hope you understood it well. And uh, I will leave this diagram down in the description so you can download it for free. Leave in the comments down below any doubts or suggestions so I can improve my content. And uh, subscribe, share this video, like it if you want, and uh, see you on the next one.